Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines. My guest is Kyle Ottawan. He's the Louisiana Secretary of State. He's going to talk to us about having been the first assistant, right arm, uh, running the Louisiana Secretary of State's office for the last eight years. He's going to talk to us about the security that voters have and knowing that their vote is being counted and not being manipulated. There's also an election on November 6th. Join us on the next Legal Lines with Cal Ottawan. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for considering our firm for help in handling your legal matter. We know what we're doing. We've been around for a long time. We have over 60 years combined legal experience as lawyers. I've been practicing over 30 years, Sean over 25, and I have paralegals and legal secretaries who've worked for me for over 27 years. We've handled about every kind of case you can handle, and we've been very good at it. The bottom line is, it is our goal to be your protector when necessary, advisor, negotiator, and to successfully conclude the litigation for you in a way that is very favorable. Knowledge is power, and the folks who know what they're doing empower you. They enable you to make the right kind of decisions that best serves you. And that's our number one goal, frankly. Our number one ministry is to serve you. Hello, welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and I'm very pleased to have on the show for the very first time Kyle Ottawan. He is the current Secretary of State for the state of Louisiana. Locke, good Kyle, to be here with you. Thank you so much for, for coming in and talking to us. Well, thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> excuse me. So, <clears throat> as I understand this, you've been, frankly, running the show, practically speaking, uh, for eight years, and you've decided to run uh, for the top position. The election's what, 11-6, uh, November 6th? Yep, November 6th. Early so, voting's going on right now. So tell us why, why you're on it. Well, because I feel like I'm the most qualified. Uh, and given the, the circumstances we're under now with uh, modern elections and cybersecurity issues. Big deal. And yeah, huge. And I feel like I, I'm the most qualified for it. And uh, so I jumped into the race. Well, t so tell us your background, because uh, most folks don't really know that sure. much about all well, these various government positions. Right. And, and let me point out, this is the number three position in our state government. Yes, if governor is. goes down and lieutenant governor goes down, you're running the show. That, that is right, and that shouldn't scare anybody. <clears throat> I'm a good administrator. <laughs> and that's what But basically, it takes. Uh, for eight years, I was first assistant, for almost eight years, I was first assistant, um, the top administrator for the secretary, uh, ran all the divisions, especially elections, uh, was in charge of elections, and so, uh, I felt right really, hand man of right the hand, right hand of man. the Secretary of State Absolutely. at that time, and so uh, felt really comfortable. Um, did not have any negative feelings about assuming the role. Uh, I knew that was a possibility, but never really dreamed about it. Uh, but the fact is that I had to step into the to the position of Secretary, and it's been a good fit. And uh, I think the people realize that you need a steady hand at the helm uh, to run a good agency. I mean, like you, you know, people have seen it's like, it's a heavy duty. Right. Uh, process. Uh, 600 election. employees. Over 600 employees. How, how many millions time. of budget? $84 million budget. And um, you've been doing this for eight years. Eight years, that is correct. And I, I feel real good about it. And, it's uh, interesting. You said it wasn't really any position you ever really desired. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's not a whole lot of folks that are in government that aren't always shooting for that top position. Right. I, you know, I, I, I had at one time run for office before. I served four years on the school board in West Baton Rouge <laughs> Parish. And I ran for state representative, and uh, God graced me by losing by 87 votes. <laughs> because if I had won, I wouldn't be here right now. I didn't feel that way Secretary. at the time. No, it did. didn't. No. Um, but you know, God has a way of working things out in right. everybody's lives, and and I feel really good about where I am and where He's placed me uh, in this leadership position. And I think that's where I need to continue. Okay. Well, tell tell us your background. My background. Give me give me education native, sure. and kind of I'm a native of Evangeline Parish, uh, born in uh, v uh, Ville Platte. Uh, my parents were raised there. Uh, my father moved us to uh, Baton Rouge for um, employment opportunities. And then they moved me to West Baton Rouge. He worked in Dow Chemical and I graduated from Brewery High. My dad worked at uh, Copolymer. Okay, my Dow whole, Chemical, yeah. Whole it's, uh, yeah. Look, good people. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Good, and strong. that's back when the, uh, those, those big old companies would take care of you and that's there right. was loyalty. That's right. It's and, a different uh, world, seems like. My mother has worked in uh, various preschools, uh, helping as preschool assistants, uh, teachers, and uh, loved it. And this community just means the world to me. Uh, this state is phenomenal.
Amen. Um, I'm a graduate of LSU in political science and um, with a minor in speech and communications. Um, a big, strong Tiger fan. And, uh, <laughs> Look, I'm wearing my Tiger. This is the first time I've ever done this, but after last week's call, I'm irritated. So yeah, very Even though it so. worked out, you know, um, it's not right. I agree with you. So, um, so tell me about your, your kind of professional and employment sure. so, uh, routes. I, I, after graduating from um, LSU, prior to graduation, I worked in the Louisiana House of Representatives as a, a student worker. Worked my way up from page all the way up to assistant to the clerk, working the desk. Um, basically making sure the, the measures that the legislature passes get over to the Senate and back and to the Secretary of State's office and whatnot. Wow, so you've been there and handled the task from the very lowest kind of I, I have. sweeping the floors to, to the top. Absolutely. I've always Remarkable. felt like that's how you learn best it and is, most. Frankly. And um, So, you know, I have a good, strong base. Of course, um, I, uh, after graduating, I went into lobbying. I didn't intend to do that. And that has a nasty connotation to a it lot. Does, of, that word does to a but lot you of know, people. I worked for a long time. Lobbyist. Explain it. Uh, lobbying is basically just trying taking to educate, the position right? of a, a client. It could be nurses, it could be physical therapists, oral surgeons, you name it. Those are the types of uh, people I represented. And then putting forth their issues before the legislature and providing facts on from our side. Because those guys, the legislature is trying to write laws. Right, and that's so right. They're, and they're trying to figure out They want to get important. educated that's by right. both sides or all that's sides. That's exactly right. And, you know, I never had any real big expense account or anything. I wasn't peddling things, just information. And I was quite successful at it. I had my own, ended up with my own practice for years. I started the Louisiana Independent Pharmacies Association. Uh, representing all the independents, the small mom and pops all around the state, and that was a phenomenal thing because uh, they were a hurting industry, and now mm -hmm. they're on their way back, and it's really great. Um, and so, at that some point, I had the desire to run for office. So I shut that process down. Uh, also, did association management, but I shut that process down, and I ran for the legislature. I really felt a commitment and a desire to serve. Um, and we came up the 87 votes short, right. which we talked about. Um, but from there, I went back into the association management. I managed the Concrete and Aggregates Association of Louisiana, worked on some transportation issues for them uh, with regards to uh, highway projects and things like that. Um, worked for the Ready Mix guys, you know, the, mm -hmm. the mom and pop shops, if you will, <laughs> that help uh, build homes and things like that. So it was a great industry. But then I got the call from um, the previous Secretary Shedler um, we had worked together when he was in the Senate I, in my lobbying, and uh, he had a trust for me and um, a commitment to service, I felt like. And um, with my commitment, I was like, okay, I think I might do this. Well, it's interesting, too, Kyle, because I, I was reading kind of about, as I understand it, there's nine candidates running yes. for the position, and I was kind of looking at everyone's positions. And there was seemed to be no challenges to the, the operation of the Secretary of State. Nobody was really saying this is a bad, badly operated uh, particular part of government. No, in fact, we get accolades all across the state about how our uh, agency is run, the customer service, the ease of our website. Uh, you name it, people are very satisfied with it because we have a focus of customer service always, external, and internal. I'm a customer of the agency just as any employee is. And outside, all the citizens are customers. Mm -hmm. And so we focus on customer service. Um, and additionally, we have a mindset. When I went in as first assistant, my goal was to change the mindset of state government. And we did in our agent. We went from a, we always do it this way, or we never done it that way, to how can we do this? And so thinking out the attitude. box. Absolutely. Or the rules box anyway. Exactly, all the time. And we've been quite successful on it. And so I assume because you've been there for eight years as the, the right-hand man and now currently, what, six months as the top man, mm -hmm. um, you've got relationships with all the kind of the managers and, and folks that kind of keep the wheels spinning. I do. And not only that, I've made it a point as first assistant. I made it a point to get to know the lower level managers and mid-level managers as well as employees. I walked around the agency, visited with folks, wanted to make sure they knew I was accessible as first assistant so that their issues could get to the secretary. And I've asked for the same thing to be done as while well, I'm secretary. Um, it's important to know what's going on on the ground level right. because then you can figure out uh, what's next. 
All right, well, I want to dive in the next segment, kind of what the, the big goals are for you in the upcoming, uh, I guess, season. So this is Kyle Ardawan, current Louisiana Secretary of State. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for considering our firm for help in handling your legal matter. We know what we're doing. We've been around for a long time. We have over 60 years combined legal experience as lawyers. I've been practicing over 30 years, Sean over 25, and I have paralegals and legal secretaries who've worked for me for over 27 years. We've handled about every kind of case you can handle, and we've been very good at it. The bottom line is, it is our goal to be your protector when necessary, advisor, negotiator, and to successfully conclude the litigation for you in a way that is very favorable. Knowledge is power, and the folks who know what they're doing empower you. They enable you to make the right kind of decisions that best serves you. And that's our number one goal, frankly. Our number one ministry is to serve you. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and I'm pleased to have on the show for the first time Cal Ardawan. He is the current Louisiana Secretary of State for the entire state. Cal, thanks again for Good joining us. Good to see us. you. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's kind of pick up where we left off, but I want to point out to folks that what we're talking about is voting. Yes. And that is how the people express their power and how they, they manage, in essence, government to benefit them and the ones they care for. So this is a big deal. This is a big role. It is a big role and not one to take lightly at whatsoever. I know it's not a sexy job. I know it's not really um, flashy, um, but this is a job of a strong administrator, a job of getting things done, especially our elections process. And we're in a new world in elections. Yep. Cybersecurity is unreal and various levels of cybersecurity. And I'm, I'm so pleased to be working very strongly with the um, Trump administration in terms of the Department of Homeland Security and other partners, um, making certain that Louisiana is safe and secure with its elections. And it's been a phenomenal relationship, I, I have to say. Well, and so does the federal government give each of the states money or have they been doing that or are they doing that and if so how are we doing in, in relation to getting our peace well definitely the trump administration <clears throat> heard us uh, as secretaries clamoring for the need for to replace some of our voting machines and new money to do so and there was about 380 million hanging out there meaning federal bucks federal bucks okay um that was hanging out there that we needed to to scoop back up that the congress would never provide and so they gave that money to the states back in, um, I think it was January. And so we were able to get 5.8 million out of that. 5.8 million. 5 .8 That's million. great. Okay. And so I banked that. I asked the legislature um, to put that into a trust fund so that we can hold that. It's a voting technology trust fund and we can hold on to that money for when we start replacing those. And that things. also probably protects it from kind of exactly. being grabbed on yeah. by any, exactly. any one of those guys. Right, uh, we don't want it sub sub subjected to possible, um, what do they call it, sweeps. And um, so we were able to put it in. So it is protected now. It is protected. No sweeping going to be no going on. No sweeping can go on on that. Okay. That's right. And so as I understand it, um, we're in the process of, of planning or in the process of actually purchasing 20,000 new voting machines? We're looking to replace the 10,000 we have. Okay. Um, so if you've early voted, you've seen those electronic machines where you can page through it. We would replace the election day machines for machines much like the uh, early voting And I machines. assume this is much higher technology yes. type of machine um, and, and we're, protected. We're, our goal is to have a paper trail. So when you cast your vote, you'll not only be casting it on the machine, but also on paper. See, I love to hear that, but there's going to be no hanging chads and all no that stuff. No hanging we chads. Can't. We're not okay. going down that route. Not but we're going to have evidence of both a digital, digitally, but also a paper trail. That is correct. See, that's the best of both worlds. Uh, absolutely. In case, because we know what's going to happen uh, in this election in, on, on a federal level. That's, and that's correct. going to be lawyers everywhere coming in and right. challenging. Okay, great. Yeah, and so well, we'll, that's have, good news. we'll have that as an auditable, auditable trail. Okay. Um, and voters will have confidence that their vote, they'll be able to see it, and then it'll go into a lockbox. All right, so tell folks kind of, um, you know, I, I understand you wear multiple hats as the right. Secretary of right. State. Obviously, the most important one, at least in my view, 
is the whole election system. You are the top election official for the entire state. Correct. I'm, I am, my title is Chief Elections Officer for the state of Louisiana. Okay. And in that role, tell me what you do. In that role, I oversee the entire process. I have a commissioner of elections who's my right hand, um, Ms. Sherry Hadsky, who I appointed. Um, and she's doing a phenomenal job. She's been with this agency for 26 so years. So she knows everything. She knows it backwards and forwards. Extremely qualified. And, and so, she's now in the role that you were in. She, no, she's in the, uh, I was in first assistant role, which I oversaw for the secretary, but okay. the commissioner of elections is an appointed position for that specific, for that specific part. Okay. That is correct. And what we did was we felt like there wasn't a succession plan. Um, so we created a um, deputy commissioner of elections so that we have a succession plan if something happens oh, that makes to the sense. commissioner. Yeah. Right. So, um, cause it was a scary thought with the retirement of the previous commissioner. We're mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, we don't have anybody right in line. Uh, although Sherry was an obvious choice for it. Um, so we've, we've done some of that. Now, I'd, I'd also read um, because of security issues and concerns that you've created a new position? I did. Um, I took an, a, an unused position and I cre instead of trying to grow the agency, which is not what we wanted to do, and by the way, it's what I did with the um, Deputy Commissioner of Elections, we use already uh, positions in the agency and I created a Chief Cybersecurity Officer. So his focus is totally on cybersecurity issues and we didn't run him too thin across the agency because the entire agency <laughs> has an IT department and right. IT is cybersecurity, but it's important to have an individual focused on just the cybersecurity issues. And so that's- And what is that for strictly voting? That's for both voting and our business filing section. Because okay. you know, business identity theft can be an, is a significant issue. And when it's country. all said and done for the lay person, you know, common man and woman, this like say we're protecting this from being hacked and your information- That is correct. Stolen. That is correct. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, any other kind of plans as it relates to the elections? Uh, I know early voting's going on. Are we doing anything to make that a larger period of time during which it can take? place no, or, or no, any other changes? Um, at this point in time, I'm not seeking any um, expansion of early voting because it would bust our budget. Okay. Um, so it's a, it, it's a matter of money. It's a matter of money. That is correct. Um, but we have made it easier for like college students to vote. They used to, when you registered online, that you had to vote in person the first time. Well, for college um, folks, we felt like it was important to allow them to participate in the election and not have to come home and vote in person. That makes sense. Yeah, so we're made it a little bit easier for folks. So they vote by ballot, uh, written vote ballot? They uh, absentee ballot, that okay. is correct. And so the folks who vote by, an, who don't have to show up in person are what, uh, college students, elderly? College students, elderly, we have the 65 and older program that we worked really hard to educate them on to protect them from any coercive actions by campaigns or uh, nefarious actors, you know. And let them um, know that they get to vote by ballot. that they okay. get to vote by ballot and they can send it in and it's protected and they're protected from being uh, exposed um, to folks that might want to take advantage of, of the elderly. Got it. What, any other groups? Other we than have college nursing homes. We have what, what's called nursing home uh, vote program where two weeks prior to the election, the registrar of voters takes voting machines into the uh, nursing homes Makes and sense. lets them vote on the machines rather than paper because we don't want individuals trying to influence them at the nursing homes and how they then vote. And frankly, it may be difficult for them. Right, right, right okay. exactly. Um, so. What about getting folks to register? How, how is that taking place right now? Well, you can register online. You can register at the Office of Motor Vehicles. Um, really, 86% of almost all eligibles in the state of Louisiana are registered. That's a phenomenal number. Wow, that's number. great yes, news. So 86% of anyone who could register to vote in Louisiana have, have registered, registered to vote. And how we, many people is that? That's almost 3 million people. And how, what is our population? 4.1 million, give or take. Wow, so um, we, that's excellent yeah. news. And so one other thing we did was we did we were the first state in the country to pass um, pre-registration for 16-year-olds. So a 16 year old can register to vote either at the registrar's voters office or at um, the office of motor vehicles. They just can't and vote till they're 18? That is correct. Okay, well we'll continue this on the next segment. This is Lock Meredith with Legal Lines, my very special guest, Kyle Ardawan, Louisiana Secretary of State. Be right back. Hello, I'm Lock Meredith. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank you for considering our firm for 
help in handling your legal matter. We know what we're doing. We've been around for a long time. We have over 60 years combined legal experience as lawyers. I've been practicing over 30 years, Sean over 25, and I have paralegals and legal secretaries who've worked for me for over 27 years. We've handled about every kind of case you can handle, and we've been very good at it. The bottom line is, it is our goal to be your protector when necessary, advisor, negotiator, and to successfully conclude the litigation for you in a way that is very favorable. Knowledge is power, and the folks who know what they're doing empower you. They enable you to make the right kind of decisions that best serves you. And that's our number one goal, frankly. Our number one ministry is to serve you. Hello, welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. Very pleased to have back on, the, actually the first time on the show, Cal Ardawan, who is the Louisiana Secretary of State for the entire state. Let's dive back in, Cal. Sure. We were talking about the hats you wear uh, in your role as Secretary of State. We were talking about the chief uh, officer for elections mm -hmm. for the entire state. What's another hat you wear? Uh, go Biz. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Go Biz portal, where, which we created to cut down uh, the red tape for people starting up businesses to where we brought in workforce. Um, commission and the Department of Revenue and so we collect our data uh, and their data at the point of entry uh, for startup businesses. So kind of a one-stop shop for kind all, yes. all state-needed information that and documentation? That is correct and we started a, a, a live chat room for individuals and also we have of course uh, a live uh, telephone bank uh, for folks to get help in their filings or ask questions and get questions answered. And one thing we did is we cross-trained across agencies, which has been unheard of um, in state government, because you know a lot yeah, of people work got their in little silos. Jurisdiction yes, and, exactly. Yeah. So what we did was we had workforce and um, the Department of Revenue train our folks to be able to answer all the most basic questions. Yeah, so it's Smart been a, too. It, it, it's Helps been everybody. a very efficient operation. All right, and so the kind of the business documents we're talking about are like if I want to form a corporation right. or if I want to set up an LLC or just a general partnership, that's what we're talking about? Right, or, or not-for-profits or anything like that. Okay, yeah. anything that the state requires, particularly if you want to opt, but even if you don't set up your business in Louisiana, right. you have to file paperwork. Right, if you want to do business in the state of Louisiana, you have to file with the Secretary of State's office. And so... Uh, off camera, you were telling me about a, a new kind of a opportunity that folks have and that really makes it a lot simpler. What yeah. is, tell, tell we're, folks we're about We're excited that. about this is that we are going to start uploading whatever documents that um, individuals or their uh, attorneys have created for them rather than force them to use our forms. They can still use our forms, but we found a lot of times our forms aren't um, um, specific enough right. <laughs> for filings. And um, in order to answer that problem, we just decided we would upload the forms and hold the forms. It really a, makes sense because, a, you know, everybody's needs are not, you know, a correct. square fitting in a round hole. That's and right. so, you know, if we're creating a corporate corporation and all the various documents required, now we just scan them and upload them? Just scan them and upload That's them. That's such that a great idea. Yes. Yes. And, the, and the whole purpose is to preserve the documentation um, so that uh, third parties can take a look at it or if they need it in the future. That, that is correct. And preserve it for the, the individuals inside the businesses that may be, you right. know, several Gone organizations. Gone through a flood praying. or that, something exactly, like that? Exactly. So it's a, a repository for their documents as much as it is um, uh, a service for the public. And tell the folks, because y'all are the state archive We are. We person. preserve documents and we advise uh, local governments on how to preserve documents and which documents should stay preserved and which ones could be destroyed. Um, uh, so we're God, an advisory that must be group. Billions. And it, it is phenomenal the amount of work really that has to go into that, and that's an area that I, I feel like we need to beef up some of our staff. Uh, I did a reorganization earlier in the year um, where we elevated an individual to be sort of our 30,000 foot level mm -hmm. advisor. Big picture. Right, and uh, it's always better to have a big picture person rather than being stuck in the weeds because I felt like we weren't making enough progress and so that's been a good move for us. And so uh, the bottom line is you, you guys preserve, you know, whether it's birth certificates or, or any other really important stuff for the state or businesses and sometimes individuals. That's correct. Um, we have a gym 
that most people don't realize. We have one of the best genealogical research libraries in the nation. That's interesting. And uh, it's run by some phenomenal folks over there, Bill Stafford and his folks, and I'm proud of them. And um, they ran my family history for me, and I learned that I was related to St. Denis, who established Natchitoches. I had wow. no clue. I'm yeah. kind of scared to learn who's in my background. <laughs> it could <laughs> so, be. I believe that look. Uh, but uh, it's it's phenomenal, and um, I, I urge all Louisianans to take advantage of it. That's, that's really what, a pretty cool thing. It is excellent. Tell me about any other hats. I know that you got at least two more. Hats. Yeah, we um, of course we've got the notary uh, public, the non-attorney notary. We um, take all the registrations in for them, but we commission them, and that's an important piece because it's a lifetime commission. Um, and we actually do the testing for that. Uh, we hire it out to LSU, um, but we're highly involved in that because, as you know, in Louisiana, a notary can do a whole lot more right. than any other state, and it can either really harm people or it can really help people. Uh, and so we really focus in on that. Um, and then additionally, we have, um, I'm trying to think. I want to shift gears real, yeah. real quick. I'm just thinking of the voting machines. Yeah. 20,000 and I'm going, yeah. as I understand it, we kind of do this in a, a really more secure and unique way by housing all this stuff yes. and taking care of it and maintaining it. I'm so glad you brought that up because you know none of our voting machines ever touch the internet. And we own our machines. We, Louisiana. No third party control. No third stuff. party. My employees program the machine. That's more safe. Absolutely. Secure. And we buy the, the computers that program it and we swipe them clean and then we make sure there's nothing on there and then we reprogram it only to program the voting machines. They're in 62 warehouses across the state. Then every parish you told in, me. Uh, almost every parish and controlled by access by us. No one else can access them um, and get into them. And um, we have such a huge checks and balances process from top to bottom that other states come to us to try to figure out how they can improve their election Well, I was going to say, I, I don't understand why every state doesn't do it this way. It kind of makes you wonder, you know, is there a reason they don't? Well, you know, a lot in other states... I know states, we had a bad history in well, the past. We did. But in other states, they're controlled by the counties. Uh, our state, we control it from the top down. And, you know, we always hear Louisiana's bottom on the list on so many things. But we're top on the list in elections. Isn't that amazing? That's great news. It, it is. It it's really nice is. to be. I, could, I agree with the sadness of a lot of scenarios. Tell me about the museums. Uh, the most museums. folks don't have any clue. Secretary of State well, um, manages museums. As you well know, we've been having a lot of budget issues over the last right. uh, eight years since I've been in the Secretary of State's office. Um, and each year our budget has been cut. And so we've gone from about 17 museums to about nine. Yeah, I remember when Jay Dorton. Yeah. Uh, and so what we did was like, we actually implemented the conservative thought uh, process. Decentralized. Of we decentralized. Good. We turned some museums back over to local communities. Some local communities said, no, we want the state advantage. So we'll pass a local tax if our people will do it, and then we'll pay you to manage them. And that's what we've done. And they it's, take ownership of yes, it. Yes, they do take ownership of it. you got to figure something they have more pride in than somebody it, who doesn't live in the area. It, it's the right way to do government. When you have to make priorities and you have to make choices, then you prioritize, obviously, elections first. And so elections and museums are where our state general funds come from. And so we had to reduce one area to keep the other one afloat. And we've done, a, I think we've done an excellent job. We don't need to grow government. We need to reduce government. Makes sense. So the election is on November, November 6th, 6th. And if there's a runoff, when's the election? December 8th. So that, that'll yeah. determine uh, whether you stay in this position that, or whether you don't. That it does. And uh, look, when I turn out the light on the um, 6th or December 8th, um, I can turn the light on on December 9th, and I still know where everything is. <laughs> Kyle, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Locke. Been Thanks for having, having me. having you on the show. This is Locke Meredith with our Louisiana Secretary of State, Kyle Ardawan. Thank you for being with us.